I remember driving one particular day. Um, and it was the first, one of the first times I had done this. I was driving in the car with my family. And one of my sons did something to the other son. And then they started to fight. And then I don't remember if it was me or my husband who first reacted to them in an annoyed way, but one of us did. And then the other one said something to the other one. And then, then the whole car was having a fight, right? So, um, and so after things settled just slightly, I remember just sitting there saying, no, we're, we're headed to this family event and I want to be happy and I want to have a good time and I want to enjoy myself. And I, I don't want to always go into these places like with this energy and this remnants of arguing and not getting along in the car and be like, hey, how you doing? I'll fake you fake it. It's like, no, I want to go into feeling good. I want, I don't want this anymore. Yeah. So something in me was moved to just start to whisper to myself what I wanted. I want to feel good. I want to feel genuinely good. I want to be relaxed. I want to connect with the people there. I want to have a really good time in such a genuine, authentic way and be present with everybody and be okay with my family and not be judging. I want, and they start to whisper these things. And then when I was done whispering these words to myself, pretty much, um, I then put on some music and I listened to an upbeat song that I loved. And I listened to that song. Like that's all I had to do was just listen to that song. And then when that song was over, I listened to one more song and I sang that song and I got into it and I was dancing in my seat. And I started by the end of that second song, I started to embody the music. My energy has shifted. It had shifted so that when we showed up, I remember going into that event and I felt strong and I felt confident. I felt at peace. I felt good. I felt genuinely good. And that evening, that later in the day and the evening unfolded so beautifully. Like all the things I had whispered to myself came through. Like I got to connect with people genuinely. I got to be okay with my family and not resentful of what just happened. I got to feel so good and so in my power, not in a, in your face way, but in a peaceful, I've got this way. Um, and it was the beginning of something for me. It was the beginning of figuring out, or maybe not figuring out, but connecting to something that allowed me to be okay, feel at peace in the midst of chaos. That's what started to happen. And then I started to use that tool over and over and over. And just like anything, right? We go to the gym over and over and over. We eat really healthy over and over and over. There's greater results. It has a greater impact. We start to see things shifting in our life. Yeah. And nobody said, here's a recipe, Andrea, go do that, right? Like part of it was, yes, I had worked with mentors. Yes, I had worked with coaches. Yes, I had worked with all kinds of people to help. It was really mostly to help my sons, right? Or to yeah. figure out pieces of my marriage. But you start to learn these things and so you will, if you get quiet, you can find the tool you need and you start to use it. And there you go. Like things start to shift. My parenting started to change the way I looked at my husband and the, the level of compassion that I didn't have, or I was missing before started to come out. Did it fix everything? No, it's not a tool to fix everybody and everything around you because chances are they're actually not all broken. Right. But, and that's a whole nother conversation, but it, it started to shift me. And that's what I had needed because I was living in woes me and living, feeling bad and living, feeling resentful and living in stress and, and anxiousness and anxiety. So what am I, what does a person get when you're in all those emotions? More of that. Yeah. Over and over. So I had to shift the dial and that's what I started to do. So I think of it as just what I said before, finding a way to feel at peace, even in the midst of chaos. Yeah. Yeah. I, there's so many pieces to this that I feel like a lot of people can connect with, but even that I'm connecting with, you know, as you say it, um, we're in a stage of life with a five-year-old and an almost three-year-old. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of chaos, right? There's a yeah. lot of um, young people who don't know how to manage their own emotions, right? Yep. Happening behind the scenes. And I, I remember before we had kids, people always saying, you know, having young kids is the hardest test on your marriage that you can have. And I think in general, right? But then you add in a whole nother layer of ADHD and autism into those things too, right? And so it's a whole nother thing to bring in. But um, I, it is, but I don't think it's the hardest part of your marriage because of the kids. I think it's the hardest part of your marriage because of the things that the kids bring out in you, right. And in what they trigger in you. And I, like you said, personal growth on steroids, right. I think parenting is brings out unhealed parts of yourself that you really need to work through. And we get the choice to work through them or to react to them. Right. And I think okay. everybody goes through that. Um, but we've all, there's no perfection happening over here either, right? There's definitely moments where we're reacting to things. But I think what you said is really important when you connected back to yourself, right? When you went back to like the things that you needed, you were able to be in those moments and find a sense of peace still um, because you were able to take a different perspective 
in there. When I'm not connected to myself, I know because I'm in those moments and I can feel myself trying to control a situation or control a reaction, right? Or shift something. But when I am connected to myself, I'm not worried about the reaction is, right? If my kid's throwing a tantrum in the grocery store or something along those lines, I'm not connected to, or like uh, my piece is not dependent on, right? Their response to something. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah, it's so true. You, you said a couple things in there, but one of the last things you said I'll speak to, and that is, yeah, when we're not attached to how they're acting, whether it's in front of other people, because that's the real scenario, yeah. or at home, when yeah. we're not attached to how they're acting, especially if they're having a temper tantrum or freaking out for some reason or just something, it could be something else that feels like others might be like, whoa, when, we're, when we can allow that to be because we know it's okay and we look at it as being okay, we might, we might not like it. Yeah. We might not something in us might not really condone it, but that's different than getting triggered. When we're getting triggered, we're attached to them being a certain way, usually so we can be perceived a certain way, especially yeah. if we're out in the world, in the yeah. grocery store, at somebody else's house, all those things. And when we can just let them be, we know we're in a space of alignment. Yes. We know we're in a space where that I feel like is the truth for us, right? Like this is what is okay. And I'm letting go of what anybody else might think. And I'm just going to let them be there because that's where they're at right now. 